My name is Linda Diamond, and today we have a very special guest whose name is Toni Carroll, and she is an author as well as dancer, singer, actress, and has been with the Latin Quarter as well as in many films and on stage in many, many different venues. So I want you to hear a little bit about my introduction about Toni Carroll. Now, I'd like to read this about Toni before we actually hear something about her. And they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, so is a great pair of gams. And boy, have Friar Toni Carroll's legs done her well. Entertainer, nightclub performer, and recording artist for MGM Records and RCA Victor, Friar Carol Terman was one of the famous Copa Girls and Latin Quarter singer. And in her new book, Legs Galore, she recounts her rise to stardom and shares all sorts of fun tidbits about her colleagues and where they are today. Tony has appeared on The Tonight Show, The View, Entertainment Tonight, The Late Show with David Letterman, and sang the original theme song of the Latin Quarter, So This Is Gay Paris, with Friar Barbara Walters. She is married to Friar Dr. Philip Terman, an accomplished musician and director of advanced education in general dentistry at Columbia University. The two perform frequently together at our famous Friars Club Jazz Nights. Tony's other books include Copacabana Sexcapades, written with her husband, and Laugh Your Fat Off. So get to know Friar Tony Carroll Ter Terman. She's got some stories to share and legs galore. Welcome, Tony. It's really great to see you here. Oh, thank you, Linda. I'm so thrilled to be here. And my husband and I, Dr. Philip Terman, uh, he is a jazz musician, as you just said, and we just finished a show at the Friars. You were there. You saw our show. Oh, well, part of yes. the show. And we had a wonderful time, and uh, so my husband drove me up this morning, and we're having a great time. And thank you for inviting us. We're having a wonderful time. And speaking of legs galore, I just want to ask everybody out there, don't you think she has legs galore? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're here to uh, look at your book, <laughs> yes, Legs actually, Galore. Yeah, actually, this book just came out, as I was telling Ellen, our camera lady. And uh, this is the cover. And uh, these are all the ladies today, exactly the way they look today. And uh, they all still have beautiful legs. And there's one thing about legs. They last forever. Don't you oh, agree? Oh, oh, they do. They do. They last That's forever. something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. So I call all these girls glam mommies. As a matter of fact, one of the girls here is um, Jane Free, the blonde lady, and she just had her 11th grandchild. And we have a picture. We'll show it to you later. But anyway, it was a lot of fun putting this book together. Linda, may I tell you about it? Yes, I would very much like yeah, to hear well, more of the news about the book. I'm very excited about it because here's what happened. Just very recently, two Aprils ago, I got letters from Barbara Walters from The View, and she said, uh, the letters kept saying, can you come and meet me on the corner of 48th Street and Broadway in New York City at 10 o'clock in the morning because we are going to memorialize my father, Mr. Lou Walters, who was the owner of the famous Latin Quarter. This was many years ago when we had two famous nightclubs in New York. One was the Copacabana at 10 East 60th, and the other one uh, was the Latin Quarter on 48th and Broadway. And I said, Barbara, I would be delighted to meet you. As a matter of fact, I was really excited. And at that time, I have to share with you, Linda, that I think I was totally resurrected to get a phone call and letters. As about the letters, the letters are in the book. She was so worried. Well, I, well, will I make it there? Can I afford to come there? Should she send fare to bring me there? <laughs> I said, don't worry about it, Barbara, because I live just right up the street from 48th and Broadway. I'll be walking to that location. As a matter of fact, sure enough, that morning came along, 10 o'clock in the morning, 48th and Broadway. I was so nervous, as I was telling you before. That night, I, I couldn't sleep. And my husband will tell you, Philip, I couldn't sleep awake. And I kept thinking while I was lying there in bed, I was thinking, what was that production number I used to say? I was 17 years old when I sang that song. And I thought to myself in my bed, Oh, I know the song. So this is Gate Paris, come on along with me, and stepping up to see the Latin Quarter. And I thought, well, what's the rest of that song? But anyway, that little theme kept me up all night long. I kept singing and singing and singing. And finally, the alarm clock went off, and I had to get dressed and go down to 
48 in Broadway, and I get down there, and sure enough, I'm on the corner, and there is Barbara Walters, looking beautiful, by the way, with her beautiful golden hair, magnificently appointed. 50 cameras are in the middle of the street, and I'm walking in, and she rushes up to me, and she's saying, oh, Tony, what was the name of that song you used to sing? And I said, right from my, my, my dreamy bed, I went, so this is Gay Party, come on along with me. We're stepping out to see the Latin Potter. And she joined in with me. And that was really one of the high points of my life because she sang with me and the next day or the very same day we were on the we were televised on The View, we were on Hollywood Tonight, we were on the, the Letterman Show. And, and from that moment on, I walked down the street in my neighborhood and everybody said, oh, I saw you with Barbara Walters, and that, that was fun. I really, it resurrected me. I'm, I'm still high from the whole episode, mm -hmm. absolutely. Anyway, so then what happened, Barbara said, well, you girls, oh, here's what she did. Right after we got through with the 50 cameras and we had some other showgirls, or some beautiful showgirls, some of them, Carla Olstead, she was six foot two tall and really gorgeous. And the girls came with their boas on. As a matter of fact, I brought a boa today because a lot of boas were used at the Latin mm -hmm. Water. And all of a sudden, what was really interesting, Barbara said, look, as soon as this, this, this memorial is over, after we memorialized my father, Mr. Lou Walters, and, and Mayor Bloomberg was there, he's a, he's a darling man. Oh, you would love her. He was just so charming. He said, I'm taking you all to lunch. Mm -hmm. And so I said to the mayor, Blue, are you coming with us? He said, no. He said, I have five appointments. <laughs> and, and he ran off in another direction. Yeah. In the meantime, so Barbara had cars waiting there for us. Mm -hmm. And she just put all the girls, the Latin Water dancers, singers, and uh, even uh, John Hammer, who was our production singer man. And we got in a car. We went to this very chic restaurant. And we sat there in this very private restaurant, and we were waited on like like kings and queens. It was just fantastic. And lo and behold, everybody snapping pictures and doing stories on us. And at the end of the meal, and I, I couldn't get over how beautiful Barbara looked. She, not only is she beautiful, but she's kind, mm -hmm. very loving. She was so gracious to us. And you're not going to believe this. At the end of the meal, she hands everybody an envelope with money in it. I said, Barbara. You didn't have to do this. She said, this is what my father, Lou Walters, would have done. Mm -hmm. He always took care of his actors and actresses and dancers and singers. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was so moving. I mean, just telling you about it, I get goosebumps. It was, it was so touching, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden she said, you know, you girls ought to have an alumni club. I said, well, we used to have an alumni club, now we'll have another one. Sure enough, we got together, had an alumni club, we're sitting there yeah. having our lunch at this alumni club. And meanwhile, Barbara, we're waiting for Barbara to come. And all of a sudden the girl said, somebody should write a book about this episode. Look how interesting that says, memorializing Mr. Lou Walters and the girls are all here and they all showed up and they look great. The girls have showed up. This is like many lifetimes later, they showed up and they looked great. And so uh, they said, okay, Tony, you write the book. Because I had all, they already knew that uh, I wrote a book called Laugh Your Fat Off. And then I wrote another book called Copacabana Sexcapades. My husband and I, Dr. Philip Turner, and I, we wrote that together. We also wrote Laugh Your Fat Off together because he's an expert. He's in good shape, don't you think, Very my good. husband? Yes. Yeah, well, he has a secret. It's in the book, Laugh Your Fat Off. Mm -hmm. It's called Isometric Exercising. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a very good exercise. But uh, before you continue, I just want to tell our audience that we're uh, speaking today with a wonderful guest, Tony Carroll, who is telling us about her various books, but her career has spanned many, many different areas, including being a Latin Quarter performer, mainly singer, dancer, and also actress. And for those of you who don't know too much about the Latin Quarter and those bygone days, uh, it was quite a haven. And tell us about Lou Walters and what his role was for those people who didn't know about the Latin Quarter. And tell us a little about what the Latin Quarter represented in those days in New York. Well, actually, the Latin Quarter was really lavish and really magnificent. I guess the closest thing to it today would be Las Vegas. I'm sure most of you have been out there in Las Vegas where they have these really, really splendid shows where the stage is humongous. 
and I have a picture here in the book of the stage. I'm trying to find it. And uh, the girls are, uh, and they have stairways to the right and stairways to the left, and they have these beautiful girls coming down on the right and on the left, and a lot of them were like six foot tall, and they had magnificent figures. They looked like works of art. They really did. I was the production singer. I was the one with the clothes on. But anyway, <laughs> and when the dancers came out, they were fantastic. I'll tell you why. Because they were can-can dancers. Mm -hmm. And Linda, you know, to be a can-can dancer, you have to be a very good dancer. And they used to absolutely smash the audience. They just loved them because they would do their calisthenics on the stage and they'd do their splits. They were fantastic. But anyway, the Latin Quarter, which is an era gone by, of the most beautiful women, six foot tall women you've ever seen. And one of them was called Carla. And Carla, when I interviewed her for the book here, by the way, all these girls are in this book. So if you buy this book, Legs Galore, which you can, I'll tell you how to buy it. Anyway, you'll see these girls are all in here. And this one girl, Carla, she, she was just so excited uh, when she said, uh, uh, when she saw the finished book, she couldn't get over it. And so finally, uh, I interviewed her. And I interviewed about 15 of the, of the dancers and singers of these gorgeous girls. Mm -hmm. And when I interviewed Carla, uh, she was so beautiful. I said, Carla, tell me about those days. How was it? And I said, for example, here's a picture of you. You look so beautiful. I said, how was it when, uh, when like, for example, New Year's Eve? I said, what did you do on New Year's Eve? I'm trying to find a picture. And uh, anyway, here's a picture. I said, what did you do on New Year's Eve? And she says, honey, I was New Year's Eve. <laughs> And she was, she's beautiful. Anyway, here's a, as a matter of fact, I quoted her in the book, and uh, she's right here on this page here. Oh, that's just a little bitty book, a little bitty picture. I don't know if you can see her there. But she's still beautiful today, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so about Mr. Luke Walters, why I really love this man is because I guess it was meant to be for me because unbeknownst to me, uh, I was in the Lamp Water Show. He brought us to Las Vegas. We worked at the Desert Inn. And by the way, my husband, Dr. Philip Terman, at that time, he was at the Silver Slipper playing uh, the, the saxophone and the clarinet, and he was with Stan Kenton's orchestra. And, and that, that did, at that time, I was at the Desert Inn in oh, uh, Las Vegas, which is a coincidence. But you met there? Oh, no, no. Yeah. We met much Many later. Years he ago. became my dentist. <laughs> He's the best in the world. But anyway, so there we were, and from Las Vegas he took the show to Hollywood. And when we got to Hollywood, I got very lucky. I mean, I got to be uh, uh, under contract to Columbia Pictures, uh, a little contract uh, for all the dancers and singers, and it was just wonderful. And lo and behold, uh, I, I was in a couple of movies, and, uh, and that's how my career got started. It was really because of Mr. Lou Walters. I called mm -hmm. him my mentor. And then as a kid, I used to be really scared. And in Vegas one night, was sitting at a table, and this big and this big star is singing out there on the stage all by herself. I said, "Mr. Walters, I said, do you think I could ever get an act like that together?" He says, "Of course you can." I said, "Do you think I could be as good as her?" He said, "Are you kidding? You could be better." You know, and that's the way he was to all of his entertainers. He was very nurturing and very kind. Uh, the man was a genius. He really had an eye for talent. He was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I really have him to thank for paving the way for me. And regularly we toast him on New Year's Eve. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely, yeah. So tell us a little about uh, a few things. Uh, training, in other words, dance training is a very integral part of a singer's uh, technique as well as dance and acting. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you pursued dance training and whether it was necessary in those days. Well, actually, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. It's mm -hmm. in the book. And I always say that while I was still in my mother's womb, I knew I was going to be in show business. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I felt sure because it seemed like since I was a child, I was surrounded by singers, like all, I'm of Italian background, so, and I was raised in Northern Italy as a child, so everybody's running around singing all these songs, and naturally, I'm going to chime in and sing with them, too. And then finally, when I got back to St. Louis, Missouri, at the age of eight, everybody took an, my, everybody took an interest in me. My teacher, Miss Moore, who was the voice teacher, she sent a note home to my mother saying, could, could Tony come in one hour early every morning? And I could teach her solfeggio and piano and voice. That's so unusual. And I was just a kid. I didn't even know what that was all about. As so did they let you? 
Oh, my mother was thrilled to death. She's and sure, married. I came in one hour early every morning. Mm -hmm. And by the time I graduated from grade school, I knew, I knew every American song you could probably think of, every song, every holiday song, every Christmas song was wonderful. And just my life just kept nurturing me in a very lucky way. As a matter of fact, uh, my mom was a widow, and I'm a twin, and I had a much older brother, and I used to feel sorry for my mother because she was a widow, so I used to do all the house chores for her. Mm -hmm. And yes, and she put me down in the basement on Saturday to do all the laundry and everything. And she trusted me, and she said, this is how you do the laundry. You start at 12 o'clock, and you end at 8 o'clock. And I thought that was ridiculous. It's a long right. time to do the laundry. So I, being a Gemini, mm -hmm. what are you? I'm a Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio. Well, you're three shades of everything. <laughs> anyway, so being a Gemini, I'm down in my mother's basement, and I'm thinking, how am I going to entertain myself? I've already done the laundry, but I can't go upstairs until it's 8 o'clock. So I went through everybody's... Uh, a closets back there where people store things, and I started collecting newspapers. This is uh, Post is Pats, the Globe Democrat, all these news, and finally uh, the New York Post and, and the New York Times and the theatrical pages from from uh, New York. Mm -hmm. And as the years went by and I grew up, I had I had scrapbooks of everybody in show business that was in New York City, that oh, was from St. Louis. I don't know where I got that theme, but mm -hmm. that's the way my scrapbook turned out. Right, 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 yeah. And then one it's of them- an education. Yeah, and then one of them uh, was about a Doug County, who was from St. Louis, but he was the choreographer uh, at the famous uh, Copacabana, 1060 60th Street. And uh, so I practically had a whole scrapbook on him. So why my life was destined is because as I grew up very quietly, nobody was ever interested in my dreams, but I was very interested in my dreams. And I went off to New York City, and lo and behold, I had the scrapbooks with me, especially the one uh, of Doug County. Uh, and then when I went to uh, New York, I felt like I had lived there before because I had read so much about it for so many years, and I put all these pictures in the papers, you know, oh my God. By the time I got to New York City, I felt like I knew where everything was, and I walked into 10 East 60th Street one day with the scrapbook, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm here to see Doug Cowdy. You know, like I, like I knew him. <laughs> I felt like I knew him. And so this little gentleman said, well, wait a minute, I'll go get Doug Cowdy. And this was about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so Doug Cowdy comes out, and I, I said, hi, Doug. Oh my God, I'm over him. I, I'm Tony. I'm Tony Carol Charm from New York, from St. Louis, Missouri. I said, and this is a scrapbook that I've been doing on you for years. Oh, he must have been touched. Well, he, he's looking at the scrapbook, and I, I'm too naive and young to realize what, what I'm doing. And I'm standing there, and I'm saying, well, Doug, what do you think? I said, do you think I'm pretty enough to be, to be a, a Copa girl? And there was silence. And then he said, as he looked up from the book, well, he said, you're a little tall. But don't worry, he says, we'll put you in the middle and we'll get the girls cascading down this way. Oh. <laughs> so you know I had a lucky beginning. Wow. I, I had a lucky beginning and some, from there I went on entree. to the lap water. I yeah. really had some uh, Yeah, entree. I really did. And yeah, I was yeah. very lucky and I called them like Frank Sinatra, Gene Martin, Jerry Lewis and Jimmy Durante. I called them my college professors. Really? I learned everything from watching them, and we used to watch Lena Horne like crazy. Oh, I don't know if your, your audience knows Lena Horne, but she's a fantastic woman. And uh, the costumes that she wore, and the wonderful arrangements that all the entertainers had, and like Tony Bennett, he was always fantastic, impeccable about his music. And of course he worked the Latin Quarter, and he worked the Copacabana. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where my training came. My training came from the experts. Mm -hmm. So you truly had an immersion directly with the professionals that exactly. were at the top of the line the of that top field. Of the, line, the top so of the line. What better could you ask what for? What better could you ask for? What better degree? Oh, you said, a, I mean, that's like having there. life handed to you on a wonderful planner. Mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, uh, Mr. Lou Walters again, which I call my, my mentor, Barbara Walters' father, uh, I said, well, how can I get my act together? He said, well, when you get back to New York, he said, you call Paul Goddard. I don't know if you know this name. He was a choreographer mm -hmm. at the time. And he said, tell him I sent you, and he'll put the whole act together for you. And sure enough, I called Paul Goddard, and oh, he was very receptive and very kind to me. And in a very professional way, he just made out a storyboard right away, exactly where I stand, what I wear, what I move to, and the music, and select the tunes that you like. He said, sing songs that you love so that you can come from the heart. 
And that was really good advice. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me the moves, but of course it was easy for me to get the moves because I had the dancing background. Mm -hmm. What was your dance training? Was it in ballet? It was in St. Louis and uh, modern. Modern. Oh, modern. So yeah. Modern. And tap dance. And tap dancing. Yeah. And modern dance gives you a lot of isolation movements that I don't know if Jack Cole style was Jack influencing Cole. Yeah. them at the time. I auditioned once for Jack. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah. But I have to tell you, it was at a theater on, on New York. Really? And did it you was want to tell us that? Idea? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's not a it's not a happy story, but oh. it's a story. Okay. So anyway, I go to this theater on Broadway, and it's the middle of the afternoon, and you know how they put the light out there in the middle, mm -hmm. and I come out, 